Wassail. Last time on Rune Revival, we looked at which runes best represent the vowels shown in these keywords drawn from Wells' lexical sets. Now we're going to organize them. First, we'll look at the British received pronunciation. We'll put the sliding vowels off to one side and arrange the rest in two columns, short vowels and long vowels. Now, the general American accent doesn't distinguish vowel length. However, it does distinguish lax vowels from tense vowels. Compare the list shown on screen now with that just shown for the British received pronunciation. What do you notice? If you took a moment to look at that, you should have noticed that, with the exception of the happy vowel, all the short vowels correspond to lax vowels and all the long vowels correspond to tense vowels. As you can see here, we've listed all the short or lax vowels under form 1 and all the long or tense vowels under form 3. The rune used to represent each vowel is shown on the left. To the left of that is a group number in case anyone you're talking to may not be familiar with the name of the runes. This leaves us with the question of where to put the happy vowel. British received pronunciation conflates it with the kit vowel, but the general American pronunciation conflates it with the fleece vowel. However, there are a variety of accents that distinguish it from both. We'll talk about how to merge forms on this chart that sound the same later. But for now, where do you think the happy vowel should be positioned? While you're thinking about that, let's look at the strut vowel. The British consider it short and the Americans consider it lax. Thus, it should go in form 1. In all the accents we've examined, we've only found one where strut sounds like happy. For the rest of us, that means it must either go in group 2, ors, or group 7, arc. But remember, ors represents a rounded vowel. How do you say strut? Are your lips rounded when you say that vowel? Unless your accent does not have the foot strut split, there's over a 90% chance that you say that with unrounded lips. Consequently, the most appropriate rune for it is arc. Given how the strut and father vowels sound different in most accents, that might seem a little strange. But the foot and goose vowels also sound different in most accents. Remember that we're not trying to pair exact sounds. Rather, we're looking at which rune's domain that sound generally falls within. Now let's look at the lot vowel. The British would have it as the short form of ors. However, many American accents have it identical to the father vowel. As Americans say it with the tense vowel, what's actually happening here is that the Americans are putting the lot vowel in the father set. Nonetheless, most accents around the world distinguish the lot vowel from the father vowel. Additionally, with the rise of the cot-court merger, which conflates the lot and thought vowels, Positioning the lot vowel in group 2, ors, provides certain advantages. At this point, it may be good to start explaining the hierarchy of forms. Form 1 is at the top. It always ranks higher than every other form. So, if a lexical set listed under form 3 sounds identical to one listed under form 1 to you, you can merge form 3 into form 1. For example, regardless of whether you say foot as foot with a long vowel or goose as goose with a short vowel, when writing them in runes, you would always merge goose into foot, that is form 3 into form 1. Likewise, for those of you with the cot-court merger, you would merge thought into lot, form 3 into form 1. 
as you can see, we've now allocated the happy vow to group 4, EO. Consequently, the Americans can also merge the fleece vow into the happy vow. We'll discuss how to deal with mergers within the same form in another video. For now, we've positioned it where we have, because even in the American accent, it is a short vow. Do be aware that mergers from Form 3 into Form 1 do not have to occur within the same group. For example, if your accent says the fleece vow the same as the kit vow, but different from the happy vow, you could instead merge the fleece vow into the kit vow. Similarly, if you are saying the father vow the same as trap, then you might want to merge father into trap. Again, the father vow could also merge into the lot vow if you're saying father. Alternatively, as we mentioned before, if you're saying lot as father, then you would also merge father into lot. These mergers occur for the sake of writing convention, regardless of what is spoken, in order to make reading easier across accents. We'll just briefly look at the cloth vowel, because across almost all accents around the world, it is either conflated with the lot vowel or the thought vowel. Consequently, by writing it with horse, it should be clear to all readers what word is intended. Those accents which do distinguish the cloth vowel from both the lot and thought vowels are generally either using a short form of the thought vowel or an elongated form of the lot vowel. In either case, I would recommend conflating it with whichever sounds closest to you. Now for the bath vowel. Americans would conflate it with the trap vowel in most cases, while the British would conflate it with the father vowel. However, there are a few accents where it is distinct from both. Then there are accents which merge the bath vowel with the strut vowel, but keep it distinct from both father and trap. Remembering how a Form 3 vowel can merge into a Form 1 vowel, that makes the most appropriate place for the Bath vowel, Group 8. Ash, Form 3. Placing it here also caters for those accents where Bath and Father are both merged with the Strut vowel. Before we move on to Rhotic vowels, let's look at these words in runes. As you can see, Form 1 vowels are written with a single rune. Now in English writing, there are multiple traditions for how to distinguish short vowels from long vowels. One is by the use of the so-called magic E. However, that would require a silent character, which we want to avoid. Another is by doubling a long vowel. As you can see in Form 3 on this chart, we have not only doubled the long vowels, but also written them all as bind runes. This is for convenience sake only. You are quite welcome to write them as separate characters if you prefer. What other ways do you know of distinguishing short vowels from long vowels? Rhotic vowels, or vowels followed by er, or ah, will be shown in the even numbered forms on these charts. Here we see the North vowel in form 4 of group 2, which is generally the rhotic form of the Thought vowel, that is form 3 of group 2. Similarly, the Start vowel is form 4 of group 7, being the rhotic form of the Father vowel. As my accent is non-rhotic, you will notice that North sounds the same as Thought, and Start sounds the same as Father when I say it. So, what do you think? Should Form 4 be ranked higher or lower than Form 3? While both British RP and the General American accent 
use the front open mid vowel for the square vowel, the British consider it long. So we're going to position it in form 4. Keep watching to find out why. Now let's look at the letter and nurse vowels. In some accents, the letter vowel is the rhotic form of the comma vowel, while in other accents, the letter vowel has fully merged into the comma vowel. Meanwhile, the nurse vowel is typically the unrounded central open mid vowel, aka the one that looks like a three. As it's not uncommon for rhotic accents to merge the letter vowel into the nurse vowel, it also makes sense to write the nurse vowel with the rune ethyl, that is group six. As the British consider the letter vowel short, we have put it in form two, while putting the nurse vowel in form four because they consider it long. This is a good point to analyze the Mary 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 merger. In accents where those vowels are not merged, Mary uses the trap vowel followed by er, Mary uses the dress vowel followed by er, and Mary uses the square vowel. We've also included the word morrow on this chart because it similarly uses the lot vowel followed by er. However, in some accents, this word is pronounced morrow using the north vowel. Likewise, it's not uncommon to find accents where either Mary or Mary, or sometimes both, have merged into Mary. So for the sake of form rank, we find that in the hierarchy, form 4 appears to outrank form 2. As the m sound is serving us well, we will now add Murray, as in the colour, which uses the strut vowel followed by er, and march, as in the month of March, which is the same as the start vowel. That may be helpful for any of you who say square as square using the start vowel. This gives us an opportunity to discuss the hurry-furry merger as well. In their unmerged form, hurry uses the same vowel as murray, that is, the strut vowel followed by er, whereas furry uses the nurse vowel. As we have already stated, form 4 outranks form 2. Thus, if you have the hurry-furry merger, you would merge form 2 of group 7 into form 4 of group 6. If you haven't followed all that, you might want to pause before we move on. Take a moment to ensure you've understood everything so far. Now let's consider a couple of the sounds missing in form 3. If you remove the re from the end of Mary, you end up with the word mare. That's even true in quite a number of rhotic accents. However, some might say mare with an R coloured vowel. Many accents slide this vowel towards the schwa. However, it typically begins as the front open mid vowel. Consequently, it is appropriate for it to be listed as a form of the rune e, group 5. The non-rhotic form of the nurse vowel is exceedingly rare in English. However, it may be found in the word d'oeuvre, as in hors d'oeuvres. Before we go on, with the exception of the letter vowel, what do you notice about the words in form 2? If you say them in their unmerged forms, mo ro me ri ma ri ha ri ma ri they all have a syllable break between the vowel and the er. You might also notice that they are all written in Latin script with a double R. That double R indicates that the vowel before them is short. Consequently, a word like array, which uses the comma vowel followed by er, would also be a form 2 vowel, 
that places it in the same position as the letter vowel. Notice how it is also written with a double R. On the other hand, with the exception of the word furry, all of the words in form 4 are written with a single R. Whenever er occurs after the trap vowel, almost all English speakers will include a syllable break in all words. However, a few may distinguish words such as arm. In my accent, that would usually be said as arm, using the start vowel. However, as my accent is non-rhotic, that has again merged into the father vowel. Nonetheless, for any pirates watching or anyone else who may distinguish that vowel in arm from the start vowel, we've put it in the corner of the table. Similarly, the rhotic form of the fleece vowel is generally not used in English. However, there are a few dialects which may say words like weir as weir. Another example of that is how the Jewish word shiur is sometimes said as shir, but for most of us, form 4 of group 4 is entirely unneeded. That is, we always merge this sound into a different vowel instead. On the other hand, form 2 of is, that is group 3, is commonly the sound you hear in the word mirror, i.e. the kit vowel followed by er. Now we need to discuss the mirror nearer merger. This can happen in a number of ways. Typically, the mirror vowel would either merge into form 4 of is or form 2 of eo. Where those vowels exist, they are identified as forms of the rhotic near vowel. Meanwhile, where form 3 of group 3 exists, it is identified as the non-rhotic form of the near vowel. Given this variety, can you see why we have retained the specific rune er to indicate the near vowel? You may also notice that form 4 of group 4, in many accents, has also merged into the near vowel. Hence, I say weary rather than weary. So, while it is possible to distinguish these four pronunciations in runes if you wish, it is generally not necessary and it would help intelligibility if we all wrote them using air. But you may be wondering why the word bird is given in brackets in form 4 of group 3. Isn't it the same as the nurse vowel? For most of us, that's true. But some speakers use a pronunciation more like beard. Note that that is distinct from the word beard. As the vowel they're using is the same as the kit vowel, but there is no syllable break between the vowel and the er, that vowel could be positioned in form 4 of group 3. Now we come to the rhotic forms of ur, group 1. The rhotic form of the goose vowel is exceedingly rare in English, However, it may be used in the Jewish word shiur, or the German loanword stromur, but in both cases, it's more likely that those sounds have merged into group 6, e.g. shear or stromer. Consequently, for most of us, distinguishing this sound is unnecessary. So let's look at form 2 of group 1. Both British received pronunciation and the general American accent use the foot vowel in the word cure. On the face of it, the same sound is used in the word courier. However, in many accents, the word courier has a syllable break before the first R, whereas the historic pronunciation of cure does not. Additionally, quite a number of accents merge the cure vowel into the north vowel. Consequently, placing the cure vowel in form 4 would ease intelligibility across accents. 
Essentially what we have done here is to say that if a rhotic vowel has no syllable break before it, it is better to use form 4. As when there is a syllable break before er, the vowel is normally short. As we have already seen, there are some exceptions. Nonetheless, this would appear to provide a good general guide and will restrict spelling variation across accents while also allowing liberty where needed. Now let's add the runic spelling for the keywords. We have already seen all of those for form 1. For form 3, we're only adding double e for mer and double ethel for d'oeuvre. Note how all of the form 3 vowels can form bind rooms with themselves, although double es would not be able to. Due to the complexity of the near vowel, we will deal with it in the video on sliding vowels. For now, take a look at form 3 group 7, father. We've already discussed the father vowel, but what do you notice about how we spelt the end of that word in runes? As it ends with the letter vowel, we used the double rad bind rune. As you may recall, one of the other ways of indicating a short vowel in English is to use a double consonant after it. By retaining double rad, like double r, in this case, we maintain the familiar pattern of marry, murray, merry, mirror, and morrow, which we also find in hurry and array. Meanwhile, by using a single vowel rune followed by rad for form 4, we promote intelligibility across accents. By writing both form 3 and form 4 as bind runes, or even by just writing both of them using two runes, we create a situation where speakers of both rhotic and non-rhotic accents only notice a slight variation in how the other might spell a word. This also reduces how many characters people need to write in most situations. Additionally, it eases the problem of vertical mergers, as we shall see in another video. That is, mergers within the same form, such as those who have the square nurse merger or the north start merger. This video has already been pretty long for this channel, but what do you think of this table so far? Are you ready to look at sliding vowels? Before we do, we need to finish our discussion of form rank, that is, the hierarchy of forms. As you can see on the right, form 1 is at the top, followed by form 3, then 4, then 2. So the order is 1, 3, 4, 2. However, note the provision on form 2 as indicated by the extras next to it. If 1 there is a syllable break between the vowel and er in the root word, and two, the vowel sounds the same as form one, then the form two vowel must be written using form two, that is, with double rad after the vowel. This means that a form two vowel can merge into any of the forms above it unless those two conditions apply. Consequently, depending on how you say it, the letter vowel could be written the same as either the comma vowel or the nurse vowel, or possibly even the do vowel. Do note though that such mergers are optional. The main purpose of them is to save everyone writing more than they need to. If two keywords sound the same to you, you can write them the same and you have a system for working out which one to use. But if they sound different, you can also keep them distinct. So, for example, the word saw, S-A-W, uses the thought vowel. However, the word saw, S-O-A-R, in my non-rhotic accent, also uses the thought vowel, whereas in rhotic accents, it uses the north vowel. Because my accent is non-rhotic, I have merged the north vowel into the thought vowel. So I could use form 3 instead of form 4 
or ors if I wish. However, the opposite should not be done. That is, don't use form 4 instead of form 3. Doing so would result in words like saw, S-A-W, being written as if they were rhotic when they never have been, and that would confuse speakers of rhotic dialects. Of course, this doesn't solve the problem of intrusive R in words like soaring, where non-rhotic speakers add er in words like s-a-w-i-n-g, even though it was never there to begin with. But overall, it goes a long way to solving the general intelligibility problem. Just finally, please note how we have placed the less common pronunciations in smaller type on this chart to indicate that your accent probably doesn't use them. Meanwhile, we've indicated those forms which may be the same as the near vowel with an equal sign, and they're also in brackets. If you have any other questions about how to understand this chart, please leave them in the comments. Next up, we'll be looking at sliding vowels. Thanks for watching.